Welcome to Traffic Talks. I'm Adam McCabe, content producer here at Traffic. Our topic for today is, what's next on the menu? The restaurant industry looks beyond the coronavirus. Let's meet our panel. First, we have Ed Lee, co-founder of Wahoo's Fish Tacos. Thanks for joining us, Ed. Good morning. Good morning. Next, we have Morgan Harris, co-founder of Restaurant 365. Hi, Good Morgan. Morning. Hi. Morgan is a CPA who started his career at PricewaterhouseCoopers. In 2011, he went all in in the restaurant industry with Restaurant 365. The software is used by over 10,000 locations in the U.S. in all segments. His current role is Chief Customer Advocate. Thanks for being here, Morgan. Yep. And finally joining us, we have the host for today's talk, President and CEO of Traffic, Anthony Tremino. Hey, Anthony. Hey, good morning, Adam. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank you guys for taking uh, some time to chat with me today. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the restaurant industry. And as a consumer, I think what's happened in your industry has had the greatest impact on me as a consumer uh, during this whole COVID crisis. Uh, not being able to break bread with family and friends at our local eateries has really affected me uh, socially, emotionally, um, not to mention what it's done to small business owners, uh, restaurant owners, and their families. Um, with that said, I'm super thrilled that we are now entering a reopening phase across the nation, and I'm really looking forward to your guys' insights on the industry as it exists today and, and your outlook on it for tomorrow. So, um, you know, the media continues to cover the COVID crisis um, and the impact of the virus, but I have to believe as an entrepreneur that there's uh, an untold story, things that you guys are dealing with or have experienced as business owners or with your employees um, that doesn't get a lot of coverage. That could be good or bad, negative or positive. Um, but as business owners, what, what do you feel has been the untold story about this experience for you? Ed? Well, you know, we're still going to, uh, even with reopening, the untold story for us is how did going to navigate for him moving forward? Everything from now, everything we knew before the virus began is out the door uh, for Wahoos or for most of the restaurateurs I, I know. And um, I wish we could get together. We had the time for all the restaurateurs, whether you're in quick service, uh, all the, you know, casual dining and fine dining to get together and kind of get a game plan on how to reopen moving forward. So the new world is that we're all sort of doing our own thing, um, mask, shield, you know, you, you, it's the wild, wild west of moving forward. And, and I don't think the government realized that that's what's going to happen to us. Um, and right now, everybody, even with the guidelines, it's just guidelines. You can go off script. You, you know, um, who, and who's going to be enforcing these guidelines moving forward. So there's a lot of things going on right now. Uh, so the new world is unknown. Yeah, we're going to go. Uh, Wows is preparing to uh, change the way we service for a while. And we're hoping that our goal is that uh, we're hoping by 2021, we sort of go to about 50% of what we normally like to be doing. Uh, and that's our goal. Gotcha. Yeah, to your point, um, everything is kind of off script. Even even us moving into our new headquarters, so many different guidelines coming locally from the state, from federal. Um, it's very difficult to create a plan of action that's going to make sense for everybody. So we too are kind of modifying guidelines to appropriately fit the way we conduct business. So I can imagine in your industry, it's the same. Um, Morgan, same question. Um, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, you know, when you ask me that question, it's hard to think about what hasn't been covered because there's been so much written. I mean, you can, I mean, it's just an insane. Our, our industry is one of the hot topics of the whole thing. And it's, so a lot's been written. So when I think about the answer to that question, for me, things get personal for me when people I've met over the last 10 years in this industry I call them and they're no longer working at these restaurants. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but in the independent space, we, we service customers all over the US. There's like a, an extended family of people who, who work in the independent restaurant space. And they've just done this forever and they know each other. And people 
once you have a skill set in the industry, it's very valuable. And when you leave one position, you just go to another restaurant and you, you, this is how best practices have been cross pollinated throughout the industry over time. Um, and you look at people's resume, they'll be like, I worked at Wahoo's, then I went here, then I went here, then they, their whole list of, of restaurants they've worked at. And now this, th there's good people, great people, veterans who those positions don't, they don't exist anymore. And they're friends, they're, they're friends of mine become, you see them at shows, you just the same great people. Now, so you said, what are the, could be positive, could be negative. Okay, well, it's a bummer that we're gonna lose a lot of knowledge share in the industry. And I'm sad to see those people leave. Now they're great people and they're gonna, they can't wait for these jobs to come back. They're gonna go find other careers in other professions and they're gonna be successful. When those jobs come back for us in this industry, you're gonna see a fresh, I think, a fresh wave of, of new talent from either younger people who are coming in, people with different backgrounds from other industries that could actually bring a whole fresh perspective to what we're doing in the restaurant space. So if you had to ask me what's the untold story, and it's really gonna be hard to measure that, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's one of the interesting things. That little, there's gonna be a little churn in the water. If you surf, you know, it's a little movement in the water and that's not a bad thing. It, it, it can be, it's gonna be sad in one respect, but it's gonna be positive in another respect. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, kind of reopening, Ed, we're, we're in the beginning stages of transitioning into a post-pandemic phase of COVID, right? Um, you have locations globally, but definitely across the United States. And every state has its own plan of reopening. They're in different phases. How have you navigated through the varying local guidelines as different states are allowing you to do different things and reopen at different levels? How are you, what is your plan for reopening? How have you navigated all of those different um, regulations? Well, we kind of started with Texas. You know, Texas was the first to pull the trigger and they were moving really quickly. So we watched what they were doing uh, and kind of monitoring our franchisee out there. But he has a total different concept. He's a truck um, mm -hmm. and um, outdoor seating. So he was able to pretty much open full, full fledged. Uh, um, nose restriction pretty much was zero. But then you move to California, it's completely crazy here. Uh, so we're still, I mean, the federal guidelines and each county uh, health department has their own guidelines. So that's what we're trying to abide by the best we can. Hawaii still shut down in a weird, weird way. So and they, we're learning from one another. So we get together, my little brother gets on a call with these guys and they, they talk about what's happening, Vegas. Uh, Vegas was able to reopen last week. So each state as they reopen, we kind of communicate what we're doing for best practices and how are the consumer responding to that. So it's helpful in that sense. Uh, but the, the only other sense that it's not helpful is that the guidance are different in each state. So we're like, oh, shoot, that's not going to work for us. Um, listening to Texas where they're like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hopefully no one gets sick and God bless. And <laughs> then you got Vegas panicking, you got Hawaii quarantining, no quarantining. And uh, so we're navigating through that. And the other thing that's really gone a little bit harder is navigating all the employees to come back to work. Um, mm, sure. That's been a very unique, uh, uh, some of them don't want to come back, some do. And, and like, you know, like Morgan was saying, it's a new world out there with our, uh, with our employees too. Uh, uh, but but in California, we just started this our first week and it's, it's not moving as fast as I thought. I thought we we're going to reopen the doors and be lining up. It's not happening. And I think everybody's going out to eat, mm -hmm. but because they want to go out to eat so many restaurants that it's, you know, each restaurant is getting 10 at a time versus not hundred at, you know, at one location per se. Right. So. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, a lot of companies that have locations across the nation, um, are creating a consistent model. We're going to, we're going to stay closed until we can all open. Um, and then there's some like you that are taking a more entrepreneurial approach and more nimble and flexible and saying, Hey, we're going to, we're going to read each state, each community differently, and we're going to respond accordingly. Um, and that's definitely an interesting perspective for sure. Um, Morgan, um, kind of switching gears a little bit. One of the benefits of your platform is that it provides intelligence and insights to restaurant owners um, so they can run their businesses more uh, efficiently and effectively. 
Um, I have to believe that you've gained some insights over the last uh, 30, 60, 90 days. Um, what are some of the insights that you guys have collected that should be top of mind for business owners and restaurant owners as they look to reopen? Um, yeah, so maybe I could share a couple pieces of information. We, we take, we pull the point of sale data from, you know, 15,000 locations now and we pull every single day. And so we look at it and I'm, I'm going to share a couple of stats with you that are, that are across the U S you can go on our website and filter it by state. And it's interesting because it's different by state. It, mm -hmm. some, some charts are totally different, but, but I'm averaging the entire U S here. Um, uh, sales bottomed out on March 16th, like the, the day the NBA, I think it was March 11th, the NBA shut down. And then it just went <laughs> like that week was just like D day, man. It was like, bam. Uh, and they went down 70% year over year. Um, that was kind of the floor. And then this most recent week, uh, they were only down 38% year over year. So we are, as a country, coming back. Uh, so that's just, everyone needs to, you know, they probably feel it, but, you know, they need to come back. We're, we're on our way back. Memorial Day, dot, for the first time in, on Memorial Day weekend, Dine-in sales exceeded takeout sales for the first time since March 16th. Um, and so that's very interesting, uh, sure. Scott. Uh, finally, the, it's interesting if you look at those two charts, they like finally crossed. They finally like, like dining came back to replace it. Um, interesting also, delivery, delivery hasn't done anything like it's 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 a lot like and it's it's also another interesting thing there's this i read an article uh there's like a little bit of a war people are restaurateurs are trying to promote like hey don't to their to their customers hey come do takeout uh <laughs> don't don't use because it it's such a hit to the restaurant's profitability it's so much more profitable for a restaurant to to do a takeout order than it is to pay the fees for DoorDash and all this stuff. I mean, it's a huge hit for them. And so I think that's another interesting economic factor that uh, is, is playing out. Um, but uh, what can I say? What should companies look for? I'll tell you, this has underscored the fact that when you hire a person, you have a, there's a real responsibility. I'm not going to use the word liability. But you need to make sure when you hire a person, because there's a lot that goes into this, okay, that, you, that they are contributing in a very meaningful way in your business. This isn't just the restaurant industry either, by the way. This is like any of us, but we even had to ourselves. Like, we have to learn how to do more with less. And interestingly enough, when you ask a person to do a job, that is more meaningful, that isn't repetitive or redundant or non-value added, they get more satisfaction from their job. And if they can receive a feedback, positive feedback from a customer or from a manager, then they find more meaning in it and then they get more satisfaction and then the turnover comes down. And when turnover comes down, it becomes more profitable for a restaurant. So we need to think, all of us need to think of anything that can be automated by a computer absolutely needs to be because a computer doesn't get the virus. A computer doesn't call and say, a computer doesn't do a workers comp thing for me. A computer doesn't have file for unemployment. A computer doesn't, I mean, it's just like anything that's not central to my business needs to be automated more than ever before. And then we need to make sure that, that our staff is helping to do three things. That's it. If they need to be increasing sales, controlling food costs, and optimizing our labor bottom line that's how we make money in this business and they all need to understand what that role is and be rewarded for that role and so anyways this this is an opportunity it just this just covid just underscores this this thing it just makes it more apparent than ever that my people if i'm gonna hire somebody they need to be contributing absolutely to what we're doing here yeah yeah it, good points i think coming into the uh the COVID crisis, it was an employee market as we were expanding our team, as we were looking to hire, um, you know, the, the talent pool was, was incredibly demanding and, and it was an interesting time. And I think that's kind of turned on its head and I think it's an employer market and we have the opportunity now 
to acquire really, really good talent that happens to be out there wanting work, needing work, looking at work from a, a different perspective. I think employees that can see how brands have navigated through this crisis really start to connect with the essence of the company they work for, the brand. And I, I think that they have a more meaningful relationship and can have a meaning, more meaningful relationship with their employer, which will increase employee satisfaction and, and lower that churn rate. So yeah, I completely agree with you there. Um, let's talk about consumers for a little bit. Um, Ed, how have you stayed connected and relevant with your consumers in a period where you've just pretty much been dark, you know? So, you know, uh, Wing and I are really active still on the ground floors because we are in the restaurants and uh, we've been doing deliveries, talking to everyone. Uh, we did deliveries to hospitals, uh, supermarkets. So we were able to talk to them and see what they were feeling and hear their frustrations or hear their concerns. And then you kind of have to take that all in. So there's going to be, it's almost like 50-50, maybe even a little bit more towards 60% of people are not going to care whether they're masked or not masked inside. That there's going to be about, you know, a good percentage of people still concerned moving forward. So we've been listening to them. Um, shield, that's why, you know, uh, we got shields right off the bat a long time ago. We order them. All of our employees have shields that are front of the line and back of the house now. Um, so we're listening to them, but majority are, are just ready to go. Uh, over this weekend, like Morgan said, I went to a bar and it was packed. There was no self-distancing whatsoever to the point where the manager had to go, dude, I got to shut this thing down before they shut me down, you know, yeah. come yeah. in because there was probably over a hundred people in there just drinking, talking finally. And the people that were concerned, believe it or not, were on the patio drinking with the mask down drinking and, but they didn't want to go inside the restaurant. Uh, the owners were all working their tails off uh, and the two bartenders were running around like crazy. I actually felt, you know, after about an hour, I'm like, you know what, I, I got to see my friends, but I think I'm going to get out of here because I don't want to also get in, caught in the news going, dude, they're the Wahoo's owner guy, yeah. he's out there, no mask, drinking, having a good time, you know. But that's where the, you know, uh, the consumers at, uh, very interesting, like Huntington Beach, like Morgan said, when we rocked this weekend, um, and the new rules with ABC where you can take alcohol to go, <laughs> not supposed to be drinking outside, but they are drinking right outside, or they're at the beach. There, it, it's yeah. a whole new world out there. And like I said, you know, so the consumer is very interesting. Uh, they do. They're gonna, they're ready. They're ready. Yeah. For like like myself, I'm gonna go get a haircut. I'm excited to go get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> to get a haircut. So we're all ready, but with with a little cautious. I think for most part, all of us are going to still have a little, you know, in our back of our mind, let's just wear the mask and it's no big deal. We'll walk in. Uh, the person that's cut my hair has cut my hair for 10 years. I, I'm sure she's not a mind after I take off my mask because uh, I don't get my, I don't want to get my mask dirty. But for the other ones that are not comfortable, let's, let's make them feel comfortable. Let's wear a mask. Let's, let's do this as a, a you know, a, a united kind of, um, versus trying to do what's better for the other side kind of a thing. Just work together on this thing. But it's been very interesting, including yeah. the nurses. The nurses are ready to go. They're like, forget it. Let's, let's get rid of these masks. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very interesting out there right now. Totally. You know, staying on the, on the topic of consumers, uh, let's talk about behavior and experience. Um, do you think this crisis will have a long-term effect on people's dining habits, uh, Morgan? I have a long answer and a short answer. The short, an <laughs> the short answer is I hope, I believe in American capitalism and entrepreneurship and I'm fully confident that somebody will make a vaccine and this will be a non, it, we will just move on the way we were. That, that's what I'm, I hope that that happens. That's my short answer to this because I, there are certain dining experiences that you just, yeah. I, I have five kids. And they're the little kids. And when we go to the beach, I mean, to feed five kids, it's not only expensive, but it's a mess. It's a, it's work and it's a mess. And I want you to know there's one place. We have a go-to place here in San Clemente, Wahoo's Fish Tacos. I can take my family <laughs> after the beach and go to Wahoo's and spend less than 50 bucks and make a mess 
and get they treat me so nice. Ed has to clean up. <laughs> no, they, they they have a guy working there who is the nicest guy on the planet Earth. Okay, he's the he's absolutely spectacular. I, you cannot replace this experience for me. In fact, this experience for me is worth way more than what they charge me for this experience. And so if you were to ask me, I'm, I mean, it's almost beneficial for a restaurant. It could be that I'm, if they have to raise prices for me to have that experience, I'm still going to pay. I, they have not, there, there's, there is price, ela there's no price elasticity. It's like uh, the Disneyland pass. Do you know, do you know, do you know this? They could charge literally the Disneyland could charge whatever they want and, and people will pay it. Like there's no price elasticity to it at all. It's just like insane. Aren't they already doing that? Yeah. <laughs> They're just being nice. They're just being nice by charging $500 or 600 bucks. They're just being nice. They could charge a thousand and people would still pay. It doesn't matter. And that for me, we have not reached that point for this experience. And that's just one example, but but like when Ed goes out to see his friends, I mean, the way he was describing it is so true. I, I want, it's, it's just built into the fabric of our, of our culture mm -hmm. so much to the extent that, that I just, it's not going to change. I, now, there's going to be some minor nuances here. I, I like, like we do at the airport after 9-11. I do TSA pre. I have global entry. There's, there's different things that, yeah, I don't. You know, the, I think some version of this will evolve in the restaurant space. Um, I think it's also regional. Think about New York City. Have you have you been? You know, when you go out to dinner at New York City, you're literally like, yeah, you're. I mean, like you can hear people's conversations because it's just the energy and the vibe, and it's just like organic and it's amazing. We don't really have that much here in California because we have lots of space. Real estate's big, but is the is the experience going to change in New York? Hard to believe it's not going to change in some way. I don't know what that means quite yet, but um, anyways, that's a long answer. I, I, I like Ed, Ed had kind of summed it up before, but uh, so I think I think prices could increase, which would which would which might shift the dining experience, which would be good for workers, it'd be good for restaurants. It, they, they could maybe buy bigger spaces, and and so I think it changes a little bit, but I hope it doesn't prevent me from taking my kids to Wahoo's sure. and having great hospitality. Uh, so that's, you know. And like anything, I think ultimately it will change, but temporarily until we start to get more and more comfortable and this becomes farther and farther in the rear view. And before you know it, we'll, we'll be back in New York sitting elbow to elbow with some stranger listening to their conversations, probably more interesting than ours. And, I think we'll go back um, specifically in the dining experience because to your point, it is so important to how we interact as a society that I think that that is the thing we long for most. I know personally as a consumer, that's the thing I miss the most. I don't miss shopping. I don't miss uh, a lot of the things that, that have been taken away from us. I miss going to restaurants. I miss sitting down and, and having that experience with friends and family and, um, you know, sometimes on, on a Sunday, we would go out just to it'd be the only outing we had that day just to go out, eat and then come back. So I think we'll get back to that and hopefully quick. Um, so on that topic, you know, what's next? You know, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're business owners, I'm sure as we entered 2020, we had a measurement of what success was going to look like. I'm sure that we've recalibrated that to some extent. So for, for each of you, um, what does success look like now for the remainder of 2020? Ed? If we can, our goal, I mean, we had a tremendous, we had a sort of a amazing 2018 and 2019, we're kind of regrouping ourselves because we we're trying to figure out what we wanted to do 2020. And we came off the gates like, we thought this is gonna be a record year. I mean, this is gonna be phenomenal. And just like Morgan said, it, all the way into that NBA game, we were humming at amazing pace. I mean, we thought, yeah, this is it. I'm gonna, after the summer, I'm gonna go freaking surf Nicaragua and <laughs> have the best time of my life, be sitting on the beach and drinking tons of beers. And then it all hit. But now, moving forward, I think, you know, we're gonna be fine. I mean, we, we obviously, we're not gonna be as profitable as we thought for 2020, but we're already starting to see the daylight. I mean, 
even from this weekend compared to, to March 16th, it was it went from back to we were down almost 83% in sales, then down to 60% in sales. And this week we finished about 54. Yeah, you know, so we're seeing daylight and we're but it's gonna be a new world. I am hoping really, really hard that by the end of the summer, whether we have a vaccine or not, uh, work with the medical community, understand what this, this virus is and not. Uh, we're keeping an eye on what's happening actually in Australia, believe it or not, because uh, they're going into their fall. They're going to go into their winter pretty soon. And what happens there, I think we're going to gauge. I have a lot of friends. I have doctors in the family. So that's our new world's based on going back to normalcy. I'm excited to see that the female soccer, you know, it's coming back June 15th because that's going to signal the country to go back to being normal. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want that uh, with caution, but I want that like tomorrow morning. I heard that all the NBA teams are back uh, practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you got a, a, the, uh, the hockey league going back to 2014. So these are the things that we need to get going this year. So because there's a whole new world out there that needs to get back to normalcy, which is concerts. All those guys, you know, uh, I have friends in the uh, different industries. So I, I like to see our country move as quickly as possible toward the end of summer. And I think because we are sort of, like Morgan said, our, our numbers are creeping up pretty strongly. It's not like it's, you know, um, uh, it's within a couple of weeks, kind of a change. So I'm hoping to go back to normalcy pretty quickly. I don't want to sit behind a glass when I'm eating sushi. That's going to freak me <laughs> out. Uh, I, 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 you know, uh, I just want to be able to get there. And, uh, but I'm also the guy that will follow all the guidelines that government has to, do, to put up with. Not just because of Wahoos, because I think it's good for the country just not to sit there and protest and everything else. Just let's just follow the guidelines, get a, this thing going as fast as humanly possible. Uh, if a vaccine happens, great. That means that we'll shorten this recovery much quicker. But if it doesn't happen, let's just work, get our act together, follow the guidelines. And I want this thing to be, you know, back to normalcy as soon as possible. I, I can't wait to go watch the Clippers play. Uh, <laughs> and I want to sit there and I want to have a beer. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want somebody with a mask <laughs> trying, to, trying to fumble his way around. I want him to walk up, give me a beer and watch a great basketball game, you know, uh, that'd be fun again to see, but that's my thought. I mean, and I'm happy because I know we're making all the changes, you know, like you say, as entrepreneurs, we're, we're pivoting the way our restaurant does business. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to, uh, yeah. now maybe it's uh, for a little short time, uh, uh, just make those adjustments. And again, I think we're going to have a solid summer. I'm not saying we're going to make money, but that's my hope. Uh, I'll take a dollar. <laughs> I'll take it at this point. So, yeah. Morgan, what is yeah, it? You gotta, you gotta keep, I'm keeping my eye on, that was well said, uh, I'm keeping my eye on college football. To me, college football is like, <laughs> it, it, is, it is just, it's just the calendar, man. It's like, it's, like, it's just that, that fall football and all the business that's associated with it and the experience of going and all the food that gets served there and the TV rights and the players and the, and the college and universities and families that are involved in sending their, it's just, uh, if we can get, if we hit that, if we can get back to college football in the fall, I'm, I'm super stoked. Um, to answer your question. Uh, okay. So we we're a SaaS software business. We're not a restaurant business. So for us, the three things that we, there's really three numbers that measure success for us. Number one is our annual recurring revenue growth. Like how many new sales we do. Uh, number two is, the churn we measure we don't, we we lose we measure how many customers leave us or go out of business okay that's that's very important for our business um, and then third is our margins we we monitor our margins very closely all three of those most important numbers for us in 2020 are out the window i don't care about how many customers we add I don't care about if, if we have people who go out of business right now. I can't control that. There's nothing I can do about that. I don't, I, no, whatever. Margins, I, I can't go to my customers and be like, hey, pay me more or, or offer them less service right now. So I don't care about that either. We will measure success in 2020 by how many people come to us, how many of our customers come to us and say, 
thank you for helping us thrive and get through this recovery. All of, we are doing so much to try to help them anything we can, um, introducing them to helping apply for these PPP loans, um, training them on features that help them make become more efficient and, and better use of the software. Um, free free services, free professional services training uh, 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 from our professional services, writing new reports for them. We made a break-even calculator so you can type in your sales and your cost, your your variable, your your labor percent and your food percent, and then it spits out exactly like, okay, you got to do this much in sales at this store to like make zero money. Like that's the, um, just little, any little thing we can think of, we put on webinars to, to help reopen, you know, these are the things you got to go through when you reopen. Just trying to stay and be a helpful hand as much as we possibly can. You know, sometimes I think when you sign up, you know, with our software, I, I would hope our customers feel like when they pay that monthly bill, that they're actually, they're paying for 200 of us behind the scenes. It's just an extension of their company that we're there to help them in any way that we possibly can. And so that's how we were going to, we're going to end up measuring this year by those metrics. Just how many phone calls come in that say, thank you. And if we're not doing that, then we failed. Uh, and then 2021, we'll worry about re regrowth on, on the SaaS business next year. Yeah. I call that uh, sowing seed. You're sowing seed into your client base. Uh, and that, that base is probably fertile right now, needing help, support, um, advice. Yeah, our third, our third court, we have innovation is number one for us. Accountability is number two and family is number three. And, you know, I always, I used to always think of like, when I think of family as our employees, but now I, and now it's switched for me. Family to me is our customers as part of our family more than have they ever have been before. And, and I'm sure Ed feels this way as well. I mean, he, you really have a community who comes back to you. And you, you want to, that they are family. Like I'm part of the Wahoo San Clemente location family. It, it's just, I talk to these people. I know who they are, right? I talk to them more than I talk to my own cousins for crying out loud, right? Like, <laughs> I, I have an experience with them. And, and so anyways, that's, it's a new definition of success this year. Ed, get the man a loyalty card. Yes, got, I'm going to have to send one that. That doesn't need, I don't want it. I, I want to pay. I want to help. I want to help the restaurant grow. I'm willing to pay more, so. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that part out. Don't worry, Morgan. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's good. I love the attitude, um, the community support. I think we as entrepreneurs need to do more of that, support businesses that are struggling, support local businesses, community businesses, because on the other side of every business is a, a person, a family, an extended family, and a community. So it's critically important. And we'll kind of end with this and, and, you know, as – as entrepreneurs, you know, you guys didn't get to where you are by chance. It took a lot of work. And I know as an entrepreneur, it takes a lot of work to stay optimistic during times like this. And so what is it that, what's that one thing that you do each day to stay optimistic in the middle of a worldwide pandemic? Like, what is the one thing, speaking to entrepreneurs out there, who may be struggling emotionally, mentally, like what is the one thing you do each day to help keep you motivated and optimistic in times like this? Ed? Well, for me, uh, you know, um, I'm a little older than you guys probably. And uh, when I get together with my kid, he's already 22. So we have a glass of wine or a beer every day. I watch him and I know that I can look forward because the next generation that you raise is um, I spoke with him at UCI one time, uh, which was awesome to be able to be in front of 500 kids, his peers, and him showing off his dad to, to his friends, which was awesome. Uh, but the one thing that caught me by surprise when everybody asked me about leaving a, a legacy, and you're kind of going, gosh, what is my legacy? Do I want Wahoos? Do I want, you know, do I, I want people to remember my, and my son put his head on my shoulder and, and he said, I'm his legacy. Yeah, nice. And that to me is, I look forward to seeing what he wants to do. I'm optimistic that we, we haven't done too much of a damage in this world, that he's going to now take a chance, do things. Uh, uh, so whenever I get really down, and believe me, you know, as all of us go home, you're like, Rick, that was a tough day. I have a glass of wine. I, am, I watch him come in with no worries. He's a senior. He just graduated so uh, from college, got himself a job already, so it's nice to... But that's 
that truly a family, of course, you know, but come home, wife, kid, I still have a place to go home to. I've had the amazing privilege to be, you know, raised here in the United States. And, and I grew up in Newport Beach. So it's like, you can't really, even in my worst day, I'm in Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you, I wake up every day feeling blessed that uh, um, I have family and friends and we're all fine. Uh, we're going through the worst part of sort of financially, but family wise, we're all healthy. No one got sick uh, and everybody's around. My parents are around. I see my parents every single. So those are things that motivate me over and over. We succeeded, we're fine, we'll survive, and we've got to wake up the next day and battle. You know, wake up and go to battle every day. And I come home and I, and, and by the way, like surfing, what a privilege, right? So you get to go surf, and then what can I say? They didn't go complain about. Oh, woe is me! I, oh, woe is me! I have to worry about what wetsuit I wanted to pick that morning. <laughs> what board do I want to ride? I have zero to complain. I do have rough days, but I am. And, and I like to, to. By the way, I've been helping young chefs, and that it, to me is really fun. Uh, Wahoo's is great. Uh, listening to the young kids, listening to that. So what motivates me is watching my child. I'm optimistic for them. The young chefs, I, I'm excited for them uh, to see what they're going to create, uh, new food s styles. You know, there's so much more ahead to look. At. I really look back for bad days. It, it, I, I, you know, I keep moving forward as best I can. Um, but that, that's, you know, I have a great life. I, I have nothing to complain about, sort of. Yeah. Sounds pretty amazing. Morgan, what do you do to stay optimistic every day? Uh -huh. It's, it's, it's cool that Ed's talking about looking forward because that does absolutely bring optimism. And, I, and, and for me, I, I would, I, because both of these answers are gonna be cool to hear. For me, I'm looking backwards and I think about my parents and I think about the, the, my, my dad gathering scrap metal from his farm to give to the war effort in World War II so that the metal could be used to build tanks or weapons or whatever. You think about, and, and you think about how when they were dealing with a crisis, how they must have felt, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get out of this. But you know what, Time, it's all perspective. These things will pass. These things will will move forward. We will get we'll get beyond this. It's 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 just. I mean, yes, and a new trial will come in a new day, but it's not going to stop us. It's not going to it's not going to hold us down. So for me, I've been doing a lot of reading lately, and just just reading about just efforts of of the and the trials of people in the past. And and I just when you think about oh my when I think about and you watch a movie about like Saving Private Ryan or something like that, you're just like oh my gosh, like how did they get through that? Like, how did they, how did they, I mean, it was just must've been crazy to them. And then I think about this little thing that we're going through and I'm like, you know, I'm watching the stock market. Like, I'm just like, you know, what? we're going to, we're going to, we're going to power through this. It's, I'm, this is, this is a trial. It's definitely serious. We're, there's going to be some change in jobs. There's going to be, yes, it's going to be interesting. We're all going to learn something, but there's no reason not to be optimistic. I mean, there, we are, the country is stronger than it's ever been. Technology is, is amazing. It, it has not even reached its full potential yet. Entrepreneurs, these younger generation, like Ed's son, these these kids are so much smarter than 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 I am. My kids are so much smarter than I. I mean, you just, I mean, Ed, you probably feel this way. I'm just like, they're amazing. I'm I, I, I'm I'm like blown away at how capable they are, and they'll they'll rise to the the challenges of their day. And so for me, I'm I I don't have a hard time being optimistic. I'm it's crazy to me that we're talking about this conversation today that like or that Trump gets on the pulpit and shuts down all restaurants in the country it's crazy to me that that happened but uh you know i mean i'm i'm ready to 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 get back and and get going at it uh, full swing as i'm sure ed is too so yeah i think everybody is and so all those entrepreneurs that are listening out there i mean i think you can sum it up it all comes down to perspective have the right perspective focus on the right things um, not what you're going through in any given moment, but what you started this journey to pursue and kind of where you're going. Keep your eyes fixed on the future and those around you that uh, depend on you. And uh, 
and, and need your guidance. So I appreciate you guys' time today. Uh, if you're a restaurant owner, check out Restaurant 365 as a platform. It's incredibly insightful. And, and uh, for everyone else, go support your local Wahoos. They're open for business. <laughs> They truly are the best. I love it. I love that our office is next door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. That's all the time we have for today's Traffic Talk. Thanks again to our panel. We really appreciate your time, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank My you. pleasure. If right. you guys have any questions for our panel or would like to work together, you can find us online at wearetraffic.com. We'll see you on the next Traffic Talk. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Hey, guys. See you guys later. Thanks.